All right, everybody have uh, recording privileges and good morning, coach. How are you today? Doing great. How about y'all? That's good. Why don't you uh, go ahead and start with a short statement and then we'll open it up for questions. Uh, good to get back on the practice field today. Um, you know, we've been um, pretty good in a pretty good place as far as injuries are concerned. Nothing major is going on there. And um, so we continue to put in different situations. Um, we're not by any means ready to play Wisconsin yet. We'll be ready, but we're not yet. But uh, anyway, good work going on. Uh, guys really pumped up, good spirited practice. I'll take your question. Okay, we'll start off with Bob. Uh, Jeremy, you're on deck and Alec, you're in the hole. Hey coach, how you doing? Doing great. How about you, Bob? Good, good. A couple questions I've got. Uh, first of all, how important to your team is Blake Hayes? When you look at what he did last you know, three years here, what, how important is that guy to you, this team, this season? Uh, very important. Uh, it allows us to play Bob with uh, 12 guys, if you look at it that way. Uh, you know, it kind of starts with, you know, to play great defense, you need to, you know, it's ideal to have good field position defensively and Blake has done that the amount of times he's made an opponent start inside of the 20 inside of the 10 inside of the five so we kind of rely on that an awful lot uh, but it is a base part of how we play defense uh, but he's been outstanding uh, since day one um, don't have enough you know I don't have enough good words to say about him and won't do him justice but um, now this is his senior year and um we expect him to have a career year again. I know you're constantly, constantly threading on your team only, but have, have you watched some of the other games in college football? And what has been your impression of the way the games are played? Not so much, you know, the X's and O's, but the, how how effective they've been? Are they, do they look a little sloppy? Do they look like you, what you would expect this time of year? Well, Bob, yes, I have had a chance to watch a lot of the games, and I tried to. You can learn so much from just talking situational football from watching someone else uh, be put in those situations. Uh, I think as far as the, the level of play, I think it's been good. You know, whenever you start with conference play right away, uh, you're going to get a better brand of football. Okay. So I thought they've been fighting, uh, competitive, and uh, it makes you just want to, you know, get to our season, you know, for Big Ten uh, football to start as soon as possible. Thanks, Coach. You're welcome. Hey, Jeremy, you're up. Um, Alex on deck, Gavin in the hole. Good morning, Lovey. Uh, I know you've talked a lot about the second year of Brandon as a starter. It's also the second year in Rod's system. Um, how does that show itself uh, on a day-to-day -day basis for you guys? I think just, just like everything, as we talk about a first-year player, any position, you expect better play the second time around. Experience teaches you an awful lot. And, uh, you know, Brandon has been in our system. It's, we went through an awful lot last year. So uh, those things won't surprise him. It won't be the first time around for yet. So, you know, every time I feel like every time I've talked, I've talked about my confidence in what Brandon can do in our system. Uh, we want to take another step. Passing game wise, you know, we have some big plays thrown up, you know, especially to. Josh Bebe, but we have other weapons. So I'm anxious to see how we spread the ball around a lot more and, and get this next group of running backs really involved with our offense. What, what are our areas you think he can improve? Oh, I mean, all areas. That's what he's going to tell you. Uh, short, short throws, uh, deep throws. Uh, most time you talk about just quarterback play, it's about, you know, decisions that you make throughout. Brandon has made good decisions. It's one of the reasons why I like him. He's protected the football. But in an ideal world, you know, zero turnovers offensively in an ideal world. I've never been in an ideal world, but we're going to still be shooting for that. Thank you, Alvin. Welcome. Okay, Alex, you're up. Gavin, you're on deck. Good morning, Coach. Thanks for doing this. Um, I know last week you mentioned that every player on your roster is currently registered to vote. Uh, can you just kind of talk about the process that that was like in getting everyone to vote and the feelings that it brings knowing that your team's going to have an impact on this election? 
Well, as we talk about, I mean, the social, uh, just social justice and what's happening in our world, uh, I want our guys to be involved in it. The best way to be involved where you, where you can really make a difference is at the ballot box by voting. So it's kind of simple as that. That's a right. You know, there are a lot of people who really fought hard for some of us to have a right to vote. So it'd be a shame not to use that. So it's not like we have to twist their arms. Uh, our guys are involved. Seem like young people today, more young people are involved in the process as, as much as ever before. So when that day comes, of course, we'll be out in force uh, if the guys haven't already voted. You mentioned when November 3rd comes that you guys are going to be out in force. Does that mean that you're planning to have some players vote in person at a polling place and then some guys are going to vote uh, through mail-in ballots? And just kind of how did you guys come to that decision? Obviously, the out-of-state kids have to go more mail-in. Uh, we haven't. We, I just want them to vote. Uh, some of us as coaches, a few of us have already voted. So uh, no matter the way, you know, we want to score touchdowns. It doesn't matter whether we hit, it's a run play or it's a pass play, we want to score. Same thing, it doesn't matter how they vote, it was just important that they do vote. And no. uh, in a cabinet of their choice, throw that in there. And one last question, have you kind of gone through or had discussions with your team or have players kind of come and talk to you just about different platforms that these candidates may have, not just presidential candidates, but local government officials as well, just so they're an informed voter, I guess. Yeah, right now, you know, our con our concentration is more on school and football, and we have time to get to that. Uh, it's like it's the third thing, but there's some other things right now that I'm I'm spending more of my time doing. We're not taking many practices talking about that right now, but when our guys go to the polls, they understand that they'll be informed. Thanks, Coach. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, Gavin, you're up. Hey, love you. Good to see you again. Thank you. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, just wanted to ask, um, you talked a lot about Brandon and, and the, high, the high hopes you have for him, um, the steps forward he can make. Um, what have you been seeing from the guys behind him? Um, and ha have they been, you know, making similar progressions? Are you hoping um, for them all to take steps forward too? Yes. I'm going to say quarterbacks. I'm going to say team. All positions need to take a step forward. Yes. Quarterbacks, you know, it's the first one that we look to. And if you're a guy in a backup role, especially the quarterback position, Brandon has missed some games in the past. So um, if I'm a backup quarterback, I say, hey, there's a chance I may have to play. Last year, I had to play. So we pretty much have the same quarterback group. So guys know that they have to be ready. We don't have to tell them that. And they will be ready. But we've seen improvement from the Matt Robinson, the Kron Taylors, of course. Uh, all of our quarterbacks have really made improvement throughout. Um, when you talk about the running back position, that's somewhere you got to, you know, replace Reggie and Dre. Um, what have you seen so far? Um, you know, now that you guys have been practicing for a little bit um, from, from Mike Epstein and Chase Brown, you know, two guys you would think would be in the mix and then and Jakari Norwood as well. Well, for Mike, I see a healthy Mike Epstein. You start off with that. That's the only thing that's really stopped Mike from just playing outstanding football for us. So he's healthy, look good, exactly how you would think he would look. Uh, he's been around a long time, so big things, expecting big things from Mike. Uh, same thing with Chase Brown. Uh, Chase to do a, a few different things for us, but uh, uh, and Jakari Norwood, all of those guys have pretty much looked the way we wanted them to. We kind of mentioned some of our younger players too. We mentioned Reggie Love and some of the things that he's done. Nick Fidanzo hasn't gotten a lot of time around here uh, in camp, especially this time in camp you're trying to get as many looks at as many guys as possible and we like what we've seen thanks coach appreciate it you're welcome okay joey you're up and scott ritchie on i love you hope you're doing well you know i know you keep a lot of or keep some scholarships back for potential transfers and you've had success in the transfer market when did you kind of decide to lean into that as as something that you thought would be successful for your program and kind of how did you come to that decision? Well, I think how you get to most places is kind of based on need a little bit. And when you're coming in new to a program, there are going to be some guys that want to do things differently. You move on from them. And there, a lot of times there's a void, you know, where you need some immediate help. 
that's how we initially went down that road. Uh, we thought we needed some guys that were a little bit older. Our foundation would will continue to be freshmen coming in, but out of need first. And then when you have some success doing it and you see that that can work, and in my and for us and for me, I think it's just a base part of college football as we go forward, the transfer and in particular the graduate transfer market. So we believe in it, and the guys we got in our program have all been outstanding guys on and off the football field. And uh, as I say, we'll continue to do it. Thanks, Lovey. Well, okay, Scott Ritchie. Sorry, hit the wrong button. Um, I guess, Lovey, you said you know the team's maybe not ready to play Wisconsin today, but what do you feel you still need to get accomplished in the next 18 days before you play there in Madison? I'm not trying to get away from your question, but I, I think every coach you talk to uh, more than two weeks out will tell you that they're not ready to play yet. We're, I think we're right on time, but we're not ready. So what do we want to get accomplished? Everything. I mean, we're – uh, nothing is fine-tuned yet, but uh, we have most of the situations in, and now you'll just keep trying to get better at them daily. Uh, practice, experience, all that just helps. So that's where we are. I'm not displeased at all by any means. You know, as I talked about earlier, we haven't had any major injuries. We're, we've got most of our, uh, our most of our game playing in based on situational football, and uh, we're getting more and more looks at everyone. So I like where we are, but we need the rest of the practice. I guess, given the opportunity and maybe a few more days in, in pads since you know we, we've last talked, just have there been some maybe guys that haven't had maybe a, a, a lot of opportunities yet that you've seen maybe uh, impress you a little bit? Everybody's impressed. Guys, how many, how many practices have we had again? I've kind of forgotten. Six practices, though, five or so. I mean, we still need the rest of the guys, rest of the practices to really see. It's not enough right now to really talk on anybody. Um, the guys that were playing for us last year by where you thought they were. Uh, it's not like we've had a major scrimmage, anything like that yet. So uh, be able to give you more information right now. Uh, business as, as you would expect is what's happening here. Thank you. Well, okay, Jim Cotter, Matt Stevens, and Steve Greenberg to wrap it up. Hi, Levy. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I know this kind of follows along the injury question. I know Illinois doesn't post the uh, COVID positive numbers, but are you guys staying fairly healthy in that realm as well? I mean, if you don't want to answer that, you don't have to, but. Oh, uh, I feel, yeah, I feel, that's, yes, we're, uh, we've been in a good place, I'll just say, most of the time. We have daily testing right now. Uh, we have a protocol that we feel real good about. Um, so we don't have any issues. All our guys are practicing for the most part. So feel good about where we are. That's not really affecting us an awful lot. Our guys have been in compliance with what we've asked them to do. Um, really like what they've done as far as that concerned. And that's the only way to do it. If we're gonna play football, that's what you have to do. You have to be able to sacrifice some things maybe you've done in the past and, and that's what we have here. Thanks, Levy. You're welcome. Okay, Matt Stevens, Steve Greenberg. Levy, uh, when Brandon goes, uh, this past summer and goes and works with Kurt Warner and some other private quarterback construction. What are your thoughts on that? Cause I know I I've covered other places where the head coach has not been for that and has been kind of a little bit leery on, on things that are being taught by private instruction when they come back to school. Uh, I'm not, I'm not one that feels that way. Uh, when Brandon is here, we'll coach him up. Um, and if a player is away and he wants to get some extra work in, I don't think that anybody that he would talk to would be teaching him something against what we would like. So to me, the more the better. You know, when our guys leave here too, uh, Coach Lou is not necessarily just telling them what to do every workout. And it, whatever additional leg, uh, work that they're getting is, is all good for the, for the big call. So that's how we see it. Uh, there's no conflict here on our part. And the follow-up to that is uh, you led into, you know, Coach Lou. Brandon also worked with a personal physical uh, physical trainer this past summer. I was wondering if you've kind of noticed a difference physically in Brandon since when he arrived last last summer. Brandon was in good shape last year. He's in good shape this year. Uh, 
He's a professional. He's going to take care of his body always. He's going to do whatever he needs to do that he think will give him an edge, whether that be uh, someone that knows quarterback play when our coaches can't coach him. I think that's a, that's all a good thing. If there's somebody that can help him know a little bit more about nutrition and what to eat and taking care of his body, I think that's good too. I would like for all of our guys to be trying to put in additional stuff, additional work in all areas. Thank you, sir. Well, okay, we'll wrap up today with Steve Greenberg, Sun-Times. Actually want to follow up on the, on the broad subject of voting and ask you about when you were at Tulsa as a student. Hold on, hold on. give me a little time to think all the way back to there. Look. Yeah, right. Um, now, I, I guess your, your first presidential election would have been 76. I don't know if you were engaged in that part of life yet, but what do you remember about your own path and maybe your, your teammates, uh, generally speaking, in engagement as uh, young voting age Americans? Well, that was a long time ago. I was not as engaged as our, our athletes are now. Um, this wasn't, you know, coming from a small town, you know, went to Tulsa University. There's a lot of things, you know. My class, I think, was the only class that didn't have to register to uh, sign up, of course, to join the military back then. I remember that part about what was happening socially, you know, nationally then. But I was not as engaged back then. I was probably part of the group that, that didn't know how important that vote was back then. That's why I think it's so important that we make sure that our guys know exactly how important it really is now. Thanks for that. Well, All right, uh, appreciate everybody's time today. Remember, we'll have Brandon tomorrow. Um, appreciate your time today, coach. Thanks, thanks much. Thanks to all the folks on the call. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you tomorrow.